Home, New York, and on the new Hot 97 app, Ebro in the Morning on Hot 97. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what it is. Uh, Real Late, Hot 97. My name's Peter Rosenberg. And um, the artist formerly known as Asian Doll. Is this is this an official change? Yes, official change. You are going Asian to Brat. Yes, for so sure. So take take me through the take me through the logic in this name change. Um, really because um, you know it's like a it's like a doll wave, which is no problem. Um, I was a part of it since shit since I first started rapping. Like when I was like, oh shit, when I was like um 18. I'm 22 now. So it's like you know, it's just like a, it's like a wave. I'm just separating myself. You know what I'm saying? Like you felt it was just too. There were too many dolls. It was yeah, just too much. Yeah, not even. Yeah, really. And it's just like a confusion. Like who is who? Who's really a rapper? Who's really not? Who's do? You know what I'm saying? So I just really wanted to just you know separate myself and just step down and do my own thing. Um, I didn't want everybody to get confused. You know what I'm saying? I got real diehard fans, real girls who look up to me. You know what I'm saying? I just want to keep everything. Keep everything moving. I don't got time for people to try to, you know, put me in a box or a category. And you think by having the doll thing, it sort of like implies something that's not very rap like. Yeah, it's just like, uh, yeah, it's it's really not. Cause like when I when I first came up with Asian doll, like I was, I was at a creating stage. I was like, you know, what I'm saying it was like the inner, like the enemy. I just, you know, it's like my my uh, imagination. You know, what I'm saying I just brought it to life. It was fun. You know, what I'm saying I was young, so I feel like right now. It's just like I'm not playing no games, you know what I'm saying? So I just really wanted to separate myself. So why, why Asian Debrat? I look like more, I just named my the, the doll that I look like, you know what I'm saying? Cause uh, I'm still a doll, like it's still Brad's doll. I just named the brat that I look like, the doll that I look like, and I like a Brad's doll. Now, d- at some point, do you have to have a conversation with the brat? Oh, I would be looking forward to having one. Um, so you would you would want to pay, you know? Cause when I saw that, I was like, oh, I mean, cause in hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There is the brat. Oh, when I when I did it, I didn't think of it like, oh, she's gonna be mad or nothing like that. And not that I think she would be at this point. Um, nah. I mean, she might take it as as a sign of respect. Yeah. Were you a fan? Were you a fan of uh, the Bratz music at all? Um, I just know the Brat from being. She's like, she's like, um, she's the Bratz like my my mother's age and stuff like that. So I really wasn't like, um, listening to the Brat, but I just know like the history behind her. You know what I'm saying? What she did. For female, the door she opened, you know what I'm saying, that paved the way for us. Yeah, no, no, she was she I'm was really, really dope. Yeah. Um, so unfuck Wittable is your new tape. Yep, my new tape. Um, <laughs> drops next week. Yep, May um, third. And what's what's uh, what makes this unfuck Wittable? Tell me about this tape. It's just like really like shit. I'm unfuck Wittable. I'm the youngest coming in. I'm only 22 years old. I'm signed to Gucci Man. I got like a big position being first lady. Um, I compete with the big dogs. I'm in the studio with you know what I'm saying with with the best, you know what I'm saying? And I'm always, you know what I'm saying, on their neck. So I just feel like I'm on fuck with a boo. Just naturally, like I write all my music, I, all of it, everything is my ideas come from a, a creative, happy place. You know what I'm saying? So I just like, I'm on fuck with a boo. Like I'm really like the youngest doing it. Um, You're from, you're born in Dallas. Yep, Dallas, Texas, born and raised. And uh, what's the, what's the scene? What's the music scene like in Dallas? Oh, that Texas, the scene in Texas, we coming up. I feel like we've been had our own way, but we was just so um Texas didn't know how to brand it. Like we didn't know how to brand it. When I came up, I'm like the biggest thing to come from out of there since Erica Badu. You know what I'm saying? I was the first like putting on for Texas. Like it's a it's a couple of voices now, but I was like with female wise, I was the first that was coming out like, oh, I'm from Texas, like y'all gonna respect me. Cause like when I first turned everybody where I'm from, they was just like, Oh, you country. They was just like story like Making jokes and I'm like, nah, it's not really like that. Like you make it out, you you live because you don't make it out of there. So um it's just really like the wave is everybody coming up. We got the woe, the little dance, all our dance moves. We've been doing dances like that though, but they all, you know what I'm saying, getting recognition. Um, it's a lot of people just coming up doing their thing, like Texas on fire. We got our own sound. When I feel like so often when people talk Texas, they talk Houston. Yeah, Houston. But Dallas but is Dallas, lit. but Dallas, you're right. Besides I, I Erica. Feel like, I feel like Dallas, I mean Houston is just like a more popular name because every time people be like, oh, you from Houston, they say it automatically. I like not from Dallas, but Dallas is like, you know what I'm saying? Dallas is w- way cooler than, <laughs> than Houston. <laughs> you you're, you really love Dallas. You yeah, are a Dallas sure. girl through and through. <laughs> yes. Nope. Um, so is that where you are most of the time now? Are you in LA most I'm of the time? Al- I'm always in New York. Oh, really? You're here all the time. I'm here all the time. I stay here. <laughs> why did why why did this become a place for you? Um, whether people know it or not, when I first started rapping, um, New York was like my my. Biggest fan base. Like when I when I had them my first show that show it was up north, um, like Philly, Baltimore, um, New York. 
I was like 19 years old and I was I just was selling out and I and I didn't know what I was doing at first. I just get booked and I go and be like, oh you sold out. It's like a venue for like 400 people. You know what I'm saying? I just had an Instagram and, a, and a Twitter, and that's how I just put my music in the SoundCloud and YouTube. I just put my music out like that, and I used to really be, you know. So I just feel like I just had like a, a connection with New York. Um, it's like the hardest place to get, you know, people to respect you with rap wise. Um, and I just came and they just loved me. Like they they feel right in love with me. So I loved it. I loved the love that I was getting. And um and so and so as a result, it, you give it back, and now I want to spend time here. Yeah, for sure. Our studio, I love the studios. When I I started really coming out here in the summer. Oh my God, you cannot keep me out of New York. I have, my label had me in um, hotels for like months, and I used to love it. I used to, love, I used to run with all the New York artists. Like, take me to the Bronx, take me here. I want to see Harlem, I want to see the Brooklyn, I want to see this, I want to see that. And I just loved it. Um, how'd the Gucci relationship begin? Um, man, um, through, um, I knew Gucci's, um, he works with um, this, um, this lady, and she always, you know what I'm saying, she always used to, like, want to, like, not sign me, but she's always want to just put me in a position to win because I've been independent my whole career. Like, I just, I picked, I picked when I wanted to sign. Like, I was independent by choice. I had all mainstream friends. Like, all my friends were mainstream artists, big artists, and I used to be around just, you know what I'm saying, just kicking it with them and stuff like that. So um, it was to the point where I was on tour. Me and Bad Baby had one on tour. Uh, when was this? I think... Last year, something like that, we went on tour together. And then I, I seen how tour was. I'm like, this is crazy. I'm on a world tour. They know all my songs. I'm independent. So um, I was like, I want to sign. I want to sign somebody. So, um, you know, of course, like, I had deals coming like crazy, but I was turning them down. Like, I, I had deals that was more than what I signed with Gucci for, but I still was turning them down because I was like, nah, I need somebody solid behind me. I need somebody who going, you know what I'm saying, who going, who not going to change me, who going to embrace me, you know what I'm saying, who going to elevate me, who going to teach me. I wanted to learn. I was so young, too. I wanted to learn. I was big on learning, just being a student. So I was like, nah, Gucci got to sign me. Off rip, I said, Gucci got to sign me. And when I got up to her, um, I made it my mission to, you know what I'm saying, to do whatever it was to reach out to Gucci. So, you know, I had the connections with her. I was like, tell Gucci got to sign me. You know what I'm saying? Then I um I went on Instagram and I went on uh, social media, like everybody get Gucci to see me. And then Gucci seen me. But he had already seen me, but it was just like everything was just meant to be. So you, you you come from the social media world, but you someone you seem like someone who takes the the music side very seriously. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm a real artist. Like I get, I'm like respected. All the guys like I, from everybody to Grizzly to every PV rock, everybody I've been in the studio with, Dirk. Like they see my work ethic. Like I go crazy. Like I've been in the studio just going back and forth, or I go right in the booth and just do some stuff like that. But um, that's why I really changed my name because I wanted to be like everybody take me serious, but. I was like, I'm, I want to get took a serious series for the people who don't know me, who's, who's, you know what I'm saying, just now finding out about me. I just wanted them to, to know and respect what I'm doing. Um, so you have seven mixtapes already. Uh-huh. Um, and you, you're dropping a tape next week. When do you have plans for, like, the official debut album? Do you think about it in that, in that way? I never thought of because, like, I'm having so much fun. I never thought about it. Now, I think I'm going to start working on the album or something. Like, I think my probably, after this, I want to drop, like, a, another six song. EP, and then I just want to start probably working on. I'll probably make that an album. I just really I want to start working on the album though. I just want to get into that vibe. But I I was never thinking about. It. I actually was running away from it because I don't know. It just makes me feel like I got I got a something to prove or something. I don't know. But well, it's different. It feels it always feels like with the album album that there's a, like one level of pressure. For, yeah, yeah. That's so different. Mixtape is no pressure. Like okay, I chart and you know I do a couple videos and go viral stuff like that. So with a mixtape, I was I don't know. But I'm 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 ready though. I feel like I'm ready. What What do you do for fun besides music? Um, I got like ADHD. I'm like a hyper person, so I'm always just like doing stuff like. Go car racing. I'm out of town. Um, really, like music, um, really took a big, huge impact on my life because, like, I'm not even able to just like do a lot. But in the mix of doing what I gotta do, I have fun. You know what, what I'm saying? You say music played a big part in your life. When did music start becoming a big thing? For you? Like 19. Okay, I was in high school. I was in the 12th grade when I just put my first rap out, and it blew up the next day. I was like, because I was already like Facebook famous or whatever. Man, I put my first song out when the school was crazy. Everybody was singing my song. My teachers was knowing it. So I was real shy. So I, it, it made me, like, stop going to school. <laughs> <laughs> so I stopped going to school. I'm like, okay, I got to be a rapper for real. So when I did that, it was no more, like, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was, I was regular. I had to grind. I had to just really, like, 
do that shit. Like really, like. Why did? What made you think you could rap in the first place, though? Like, who were my, you? My mother. My mother. Um, she rap. I was ran rap. My mama. She rapped. Um, I always had this voice. I was made like a little song when I was younger with my little sisters and them. They swear they can sing, but they can't. But I, uh, <laughs> I used to make like little songs and stuff. We used to make songs that make all type of stuff up. Be beating on the um the wall and stuff. Like I used to swear I was going crazy. How how far did your mom take it in music? My mom took it, okay, my mom took it up until she was signed to um, Universal. Then my mom, um, cause like, I got it like a gangster family. <laughs> okay. I got like a gangster family, so my mom is like gangster. So she uh, she she made it up until she until she signed with Universal, and then her manager with the jail for like a long, like fed time, long time. So it, my mama, um, by that time, I was the, my mom had already had three kids. So it was like uh, she was young when she had a kid, so three kids. So it was like when her manager with the jail, she just straight got off track and just started like you know doing other stuff. So um, I always said I was gonna be like the better version of my mother. I always said that, and I said I always want to rap. She's always had me in the studio. So. And how excited is she about the oh, success? Oh yeah, she's you've excited. Had. Everybody excited. Everybody's so happy for me because they seen me do this. Like they seen me be right um, on a couch, sleep, waking up right. And I had a little note. Book, just writing my music and stuff like that. So everybody just so happy to see. But when I signed a Gucci, I think it, it woke everybody up. Any it, if my granny, my auntie, cousins, anybody was sleep on me, they woke them up because I did the impossible. Like they didn't they didn't expect that. Um, who what artists influenced you? Who were your favorite artists just to listen to? Um, when I was younger, my favorite artist to listen to was like um, see, I, I ain't that old. I'm still younger. Yeah, exactly. It's not, that, <laughs> it's not that long ago. So, so like Future, when Future hit the streets, oh my God, Future, um, Trina, um, Nicki Minaj, Lil Wayne, um, Drake, like all the people like you really just seen on TV and stuff like that, I was listening to The Weeknd. <laughs> and um, what do you do? You have any like specific goals besides getting you know eventually getting your album out, et cetera, that you really know you want to achieve? Oh yeah, my my official goal um is to keep pushing doing my merch. I have like I have like a big influence with the youth. Like it's so crazy. Like the impact that I have on on these girls and boys' life is so crazy because like my fans watched me grow and become the person that I am today. So. I'm just basically like my whole style from when I wear my diamonds on my face to the to the to the hearts and stars on my face to everything about me. I'm just like not only like I I don't look at it as I'm selling it, but I look at it as like I'm just help building everybody confidence. Like be yourself, you know what I'm saying? Do you to the fullest. You can you can wear what you want to wear, you can do what you wanna do. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to, you know what I'm saying, just be the be be what other people is. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm so different. I got like braids in my head. Um, I'm selling these too for girls. You know what I'm saying? Just to just to keep helping girls. Just I I want girls just to feel good about their self confidence. Cause like it was one point of time, I had zero dollars, but I had confidence. You know what I'm saying? That really, you know what I'm saying? Helped me get by a lot. Just being confident in myself, believing in myself. And when other people see you, how how much you love yourself and respect yourself, then they have no choice but to you know do the same thing. So just keep my merch going. Keep keep um keep these girls heads high. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't want them to feel like they got to do anything for anything. I really just want to keep them solid. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of young pregnant teens, a lot of lost teens, a lot of girls in the hood. Just keep everybody elevated. Keep everybody going. I just want to keep on going because if I fall off right now, a lot of kids going to fall off too. Or they just going to stop believing. I'm like, oh, that shit is not real. So you you so you so like to apply that pressure to yourself? Oh, yeah, for like... sure, for sure. I'm real hard on myself too, like real hard on myself. It just it helps me, you know, be stronger too, cause I don't have like, you know, like a lot of people around me to tell me what to do. I'm like the one that's like, you know, telling you know people what to do and stuff like that. So I just feel like it just keep me pushing and keep me going. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. How did uh how did your fan base react to the name change? A lot of them liked it. A lot of them didn't. They was crazy. Some of them crazy. They be thinking they they my mama or something. A lot of them like. So you, no, you I, I figured Asian it would be a split. I figured it would be a split because it's weird. People get used to something and uh -huh. then when they change it, that's a lot. I like, like it though. I was doing an interview. I was like, "What's up? It's Asian Doll." I'm like, "Oh shit, damn! I gotta say Asian the Brat." You know? I just feel like it's like they gonna call me Asian Doll regardless, but I go by Asian the Brat. But I'm gonna answer. Here's the question though: What does some <laughs> What does a fan call you when they see you on the street? Because Asian the Brat is a long thing they to call, say. Really, they Asian Doll. Like they they call me either Asian or Asian though. A lot of girls, a lot of girls call me twin. <laughs> yeah. Like I like the um girls that's like my skin complexion. They all they think I'm like twin, they big sister. 
They be like, sis, twin. <laughs> they always say that. <laughs> All right. Well, her name is now Asian the Brat. Her new tape, Unfuck Wittable, comes out next week. I just wanted you to come up so I could get to know you a little bit and see for what sure. you're about. Shout out to Dallas, Texas, Gucci. Thank um, you. Thank you for coming through. Thank you guys for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> no doubt. Asian the Brat, ladies and gentlemen. Real late, Hot 97.